So this video should hopefully be a good beginner's discussion or tutorial. What I'm going to be showing you is how to basically have an image and dynamically toggle some layers using checkboxes. So we're going to cover how to do checkboxes, how to listen for when those checkboxes change, and also a little bit of CSS to get these images kind of layered up on top of each other so we can hide and show different styles of the image. Um, this is a great learning experience if you're a beginner, so definitely stick around if you don't know much about checkboxes or how to dynamically do things in JavaScript. So let's just go ahead and dive into the code and try to figure out how to do this. So we are going to start off with a empty HTML file. I'm going to do an exclamation mark and that should scaffold out a bare bones HTML that we can kind of fill in. By the way, I have an extension called Live Server Setup. So whenever I save this file, it's going to refresh my browser. It's really useful. Definitely recommend you download it. But a little bit of project setup. We have an images folder where we have a tree and then we have a topper and we have stars and we have lights. Now these are all the same dimensions and what we're going to end up doing is just layer them on top of each other and dynamically toggle them on and off based on what is checked. So that is a project structure. We should be good to go. Let's just change the title of this to Christmas tree and just start implementing some stuff. So the first thing I want to do is I would like to actually display those images on the page and try to get them all to be layered on top of each other. So in the body, let's just go ahead and try doing that. So say image source tree or slash images slash tree. See if I can find that. Go ahead and save that and you'll see that the tree shows up and we can try to do the same approach for the other images. So I'm going to do the same thing for I think stars is one and save it. And you notice that the stars don't actually show up. In fact, they show up down below and that is because the way that images are displayed in CSS, I believe they use a default display of block. So they're going to basically not be able to overlap. Now, in order to achieve an overlap, you need to change uh, some properties on it. I'm going to do positioning so I could change it to absolute positioning and see how that works. So let's apply some style to our HTML. One way you can do that is in the head. I could just put a style tag and inside the style tag, I'm going to apply a CSS property to all images on the page because this is a small application and we really only have a couple of images. So I'm gonna say for every image that's on the play on the page, say display of, um, or I'm say say position of absolute. Now, if I do this, what it's going to do is basically align all those images directly over each other. Let's see if I can kind of show you this. If I load up the inspector, so if I right click on this and say inspect, that'll load up my, my Chrome dev tools and we can actually inspect what's going on. So you see that we have these images now and they happen to all overlap around the same point. They're all like positioned up here, which means that as I add more images, they're just gonna overlap over each other. So that's how you can achieve that. And let's just go ahead and add the other images. So we have stars, we have tree. Um, what is the other image that we have? We have topper and we have lights. Let's save those and now we have the full layered Christmas tree displayed here. So that's pretty cool. And so now you have to think to yourself, oh, how do I make it so that if I have a checkbox, I can hide or show these different images? Um, well, we're going to use a little bit of JavaScript. So when you click on the checkbox, we can change the styling dynamically on the page. And that'll basically cause images to disappear or not. Um, so the first thing we need to do, let's try to make an input box. So I'm going to make an input box here. And I'm going to call this name of uh, we can just do like lights and let's just go ahead and save that and see if an input box shows up and it does, but we want to do check boxes. So what we could do is add another property or attribute to this input tag called type. And I'm going to say check box. So now we actually have a check box that we can click, but there's no label. So it doesn't really explain to us what we're actually clicking. So another tag that you can add in HTML is called a label and this label, you can actually put some text in it. So I could say like, um, lights and as I save that you'll see that the lights is going to show up okay now if you want to do semantic CSS you need to add an ID to this input and add a for attribute to this but this is just a beginner's tutorial so let's just continue on but we also need to add a checkbox for the stars so I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste these two lines and I'm gonna change this to stars change this to stars and I'm going to do the same thing for the 
um, the, what, are we, what are we doing, the topper. I'm going to say topper and topper. And now we have three checkboxes, lights, stars, and toppers. Uh, one thing I'll notice is that when the page loads, we actually have all these being displayed as is. So it'll be cool to have the checkboxes already be checked. So another attribute you can add to input checkboxes is just say checked. Okay, so we're going to default these all to checked. Just notice I'm just adding the checked attribute to the input box. And now all those are going to be checked. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And we can uncheck them as we need to. I'm going to also put a line break. If you notice that these are kind of displayed in a certain order and now the tree is over to the right. What I want to do is I want to put this tree directly below. So we can simply just do a line break here. And that should put the tree below those input boxes and make it a little bit nicer to use. Um, the next step, okay, so this is going to be the, the most interesting part of this tutorial is how do you dynamically hide and show these layers depending on what's checked? Well, we could simply use a little bit of JavaScript. So down here in the bottom of the body, right before that closing body tag, I'm going to say script and I'm going to basically just put a function called toggle um, image. How about that? And that's going to take one argument. So if you don't know how functions work in JavaScript, I highly recommend you go and learn more about them. But basically I'm defining a function called toggle image, which we can invoke in our HTML when something happens. And this function is going to take something called a argument. So we're going to make it so we pass a sh an ID to this um, function. So I'm going to say image ID. And this should hopefully all make sense in just a second. And what happens is when we check uh, one of these input boxes, when we change them, we want to basically call this function and pass the ID of the image that we want to toggle. Okay, so what we could do here is we could say on change, we're going to call a function called toggle image. Okay, because this function is declared down here, so we have the ability to call it. And we are also going to call it and pass a argument which is going to be the ID of whatever image we want to toggle. So in this case, we are clicking on lights. So we should probably toggle an ID on the page called lights image. And so again, we haven't declared this ID. So let's go down to the lights image down here and say ID is equal to this. So now we have an image that actually has a ID on it called lights image. And when we click on this first input box of lights, it's going to call a function called toggle image and it's going to pass that lights image string. And now in our code down here, we can basically toggle this. One way you can do this in JavaScript to get the DOM element. So we actually want to get the DOM element of the lights. So this, these are like the little red and yellow dots. I'm considering those lights. We can say document dot get element by ID. And we could just simply pass in that ID that was passed in over here. Okay. And what this allows us to do is we kind of abstracted a function to able easily toggle images. So if we needed to add more images later on, all we have to do is just add another on change function and change the, the thing that we're actually changing. Hopefully that makes sense. But we get the element. So this is going to be the actual image on the page. And what we want to do is we want to change the opacity to zero. So so a quick trick that you can do to achieve this is I'm going to simply just add a new class up here called hide and that's going to say opacity of zero. And we're going to add that class dynamically to the image if this is checked. So over here, I'm going to go ahead and get that DOM element. I'm going to say class list. This is a property that exists on DOM nodes, which allows you to toggle or add or remove different classes. And I'm going to say class list dot toggle. And I'm going to go ahead and say toggle the hide class. All right, so let's see this in action. Hopefully this works. I should be able to click on this first one and you'll see that the lights go on and off depending on how I've checked that input box. So that's pretty cool, I think. So let's just go ahead and show you on the page what's going on here. Notice that when I click on lights, a class of hide, actually this is probably being blocked by my head, so let's move this over. Let me zoom in just a little bit for you all. So you'll see that the class of hide is being attached to this DOM element here. And when I click it, that class gets removed. So unchecked, hide is added, checked, hide is removed. So we're just toggling that class on the DOM element, which is changing the opacity of the image, which is allowing it to either hide or show on the page. So I hope that makes sense. It's kind of 
basic functionality, but it could be kind of confusing. So we need to do the same approach for the other images. I'm going to go ahead and add a, an ID to the topper and say topper image. And I'm going to say ID of star, stars image. And you can name these whatever you want. I'm just choosing topper image. And we need to achieve the same thing. So just take this on change event listener. And we're going to attach it to the other inputs here. And we're going to change this to stars image. And we're going to change the ID that we're passing in to topper image. Okay. So now as we click on these different um, checkboxes, the different images are going to be hidden or shown based on opacity. So that's kind of how you can create a dynamically layered image using JavaScript, CSS, and HTML. All right, that's basically it. If you enjoyed watching this video, give me a thumbs up because it helps my channel grow. Also leave a comment below if you have an idea of what I could build next or something cool that could help you learn more about functionality and logic and JavaScript. I thought this was a cool little thing to kind of show you because it does touch on a little bit of topics such as event listeners, checkboxes, and dynamically adding classes to DOM elements. And like always, if you're new to this channel, be sure to click that subscribe button because this is going to help you become a better JavaScript developer in the future. So stay tuned for more videos.